Hello, everybody. We are back comparing the Rupert Beeve headphone amplifier against, at this time, the 887 from Monolith. I have both amplifiers plugged into the, into the SMSL SU-8, and we're going to go back and forth. This is going to be a quick hit, meaning we're just going to listen to various songs and give you a general impression about it. And w one of the things that is a little difficult to accept is that the Rupert Neve costs as much as it does, $500. And it doesn't have a gain switch. Um, it, a lot of people complain that it doesn't have the best components, most modern components, which is neither here nor there, in my opinion. And on top of that, it doesn't come with a DAC. Now, the 887 doesn't come with a DAC either. Neither does the 887 are $100 cheaper. And they provide more power than the Rupert Neve. So anybody who is thinking about buying the Rupert Neve over the 887, 789, 888, or any other amplifier really has to consider whether or not the Rupert Neve amplifier is, first of all, something that they can afford, and second of all, really worth the money to them. I'm not saying that it's not worth the money to some people, I'm sure it is, uh, but it's not going to be for everyone. All right, so here we go. We're going to start into the test. I've got uh, music that will be streaming through Amazon Music HD. Uh, I'm currently listening to a song, so I'm going to stop that. And the first song we're going to listen to is Pure Water by Mustard and Migos. Currently, I have my headphones, and by the way, the headphones are the Grado GS1000E. And I've got them plugged into the Rupert Neve first volume. I'm going to, okay, so about 6.30-ish, around 6.30-ish, that's where there's zero volume. And this amplifier has perfect volume matching. So there's volume matching. I mean, by there's no channel imbalance. So it's perfect channel balance. So we're going to try to first figure out a volume that does work for me it's loud enough and then we're going to try to volume match on the 887 when we start okay so let's get started on pure water here we go and we're currently at zero i hear absolutely nothing we are just about seven o'clock perfect channel balance we are at nine o'clock and this is about as loud as People will probably listen to this song just sitting around on their couch. It's about 10 o'clock, about 11 o'clock. A little past 11, and that's my max volume listening level. The bass is very light. Of course, that really has to do with the GS1000 and the SMSL. The SMSL is a very neutral DAC, and the GS1000 does not emphasize the bass at all. It's clear. There's no distortion. I don't hear any harshness. There's no noise. So let's stop the music for a second. And nothing is playing. And I hear nothing, absolutely nothing. It's pure dark silence here. So let me switch. So let me switch, I had somebody calling me, to the 887. So I've switched to the 887. And I'm going to switch here. And I'm going to increase the volume. I'm going to start playing the song again. And I'm going to increase the volume to where I think it was. It will be matched on the Rupert Neve. It's set at high gain. I'm going to just leave it at high gain. Okay, here we go. I would say on high gain, it's probably close to 9 o'clock on the 887 to volume match at around 11, a little past 11 o'clock on the Rupert Neve. Again, high gain. Okay, so I'm going to pause and I'm going to switch back to the Neve and listen. Yeah, that's, that's very close volume match. And there is absolutely no difference in sound quality at all. Stop, switch. Here we go again. Stop, switch back. 
and I'm listening for the bass. Sounds exactly the same. If you were to sit there, close your eyes, put on a pair of headphones, and somebody didn't tell you, and you're not the one operating, somebody sat, sat you down, and you were the test subject, I don't know if you would really be able to tell any difference in sound character. I can't. If all things are the same, right? Everything is even, the playing field. I don't think you can really hear any difference. The only way you would be able to tell a difference is if somehow you knew that one was set at a particular volume and the other one came on and it was at a different volume. And so you would know, oh, that the one that's at that different volume, that's amplifier B or whatever. But volume match as close as I can get it, they sound exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. But let's move on to a different song. What if we go to, well, I almost said let's go to Dreamer, but let's not do that. Let's go to Want You Back by Haim. And it's going to start ramping up here. It takes a few moments for Amazon to buffer, and here we go. We're currently on the Rupert Neve, and that volume I told you about, a little past 11 o'clock, it's a little too loud on this song, so I'm going to bring it down. And I would say about 10 o'clock or so. That's about right. That's as loud as I would want to listen to the song. It's loud enough that I have to... I feel like I have to raise my voice to speak. There's no harshness, absolutely clear. I can hear the separation of vocalists, but again, that's the headphone more than it is the amplifier. Okay, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna switch, and I'm gonna bring the volume down a little bit. So it's about nine o'clock on the 887. I'm gonna start playing again. And that's a little... And that's about volume at just a little bit past 9 o'clock on the 887. It's about 10 o'clock-ish on the Rupert Neve. No harshness. I don't hear any distortion, no noise. Okay, we're going to stop, switch. Okay, switch back. Keep playing. Now I'm just going to switch back and forth. I'm not even going to pause the song. I'm going to increase the volume on the Rupert Neve. It's just a little bit quieter. Switch back to the SM uh, to the 887. Sonically, they sound. I mean, it's it's the SMS are neutral, they're clean, they're undistorting, not distorting. They don't produce any noise, n nothing. And so the sound that's coming from the SMSL into either and both of these amplifiers remains true. And by the way, I have this connected through XLR. So they're both balanced connections from the SMSL. Now, w what happens if you switch to... RCA on one versus the other, I, I don't know. And frankly, maybe there's a change, maybe there isn't a change that depends on your setup, uh, whether there's a significant amount of distortion or noise or interference in the RCA connection or your surroundings. But the XLR, neutral, clean, undistorted. Let's do one more song. What if we go to Scurzo for X-Wings, Bert Neve, and let's play. This is about loud enough for me to listen to the entire song. And I feel like I have to speak a little bit louder. It's probably louder than most people would listen to this song. I'm going to switch now. But for the slight volume differences, I don't hear anything else that would distinguish these two. Okay, let's switch back to the Rupert. Absolutely crystal clean, undistorted. No sonic difference at all. All right. 
So look, we can keep doing this for 20, 30, 40, 50 minutes. It's not going to change anything. I've had this, I have a year long, more than a year long experience with the Rupert Neve. That's how long I've had it. And I've had over a month of experience with the 887 going back and forth at this point will result in the same conclusion, which is they both sound exactly the same. Yes. Amplifier signature, depending on how they amplify the signal. A good, excellent example of this is the Bellari, a button that filters the signal and adds a little bit of bass and a little bit of sparkle in the in the music. And it's a, it's a complete night and day difference when you do that. Quite noticeable. These amplifiers don't. There's no button here that would that would allow for that sort of alteration. 80, no, there's no audible difference whatsoever. And then you have the Rupert Neve. And some people might say, well, the Rupert Neve doesn't have the DHX technology. It's not the most recent. It's not the most amazing. It's too utilitarian. It must not be as good. And that's simply not the case. The Rupert Neve amplifier is as quiet and as neutral as the 887. Now, some people might complain that the 887, because of its lower distortion numbers and higher amplification, would provide better sonic character. And my retort to that is the, dif the nuanced differences between a THD number of 0 0.0004 and 0 0.002 at a given amplification and impedance load, then you have the ears of an alien. You simply cannot do that. It, no, it's not impossible. I totally hear it. And my, like, there's no point arguing with those people because they don't believe in reality. And the reality of the situation is you can't hear the difference. Now, you may want to have that extra lower THD number from the 887 or the 888 or whatever else is coming out next year. And that's fine. I mean, that's for anybody to tell you that there is an audible difference, something that you can actually, as a human being, not a space alien, hear, that's not true. It's simply scientifically impossible. I'm not saying that physiologically impossible. So let's put that argument to the side for a moment. The next, I, I think both of these amplifiers, the 887, Rupert Neve, and, and, even, and even the 789, which is down here, let me show you. It's right down there somewhere. That's where the 789 is. You see it? Um, all of these amplifiers have basically the same features. They all amplify sound. That's the feature. So you can go from low, medium to high. They also have an XLR output if you want balanced headphone connection. And the only benefit to the XLR output in modern amplifiers is higher output, more amplification. There's no reason why somebody would need to use the XLR out. That being said, for $500, Rupert Neve should have, in I'm not saying that I need it, I don't, I don't frankly care, but people who are spending that much money and say, look, I should get my Rupert, like he designed it, I don't know if he actually did, his company has XLR input, why not have an XLR headphone output? The circuitry is ready to be used. Why not use it? And I don't know the answer to that. You're going to have to email these guys to figure it out if they've deigned to give you an answer. But I can see the attractiveness of the Rupert Neve for a lot of people who really do want something unique. And the Rupert Neve arguably is unique. Hopefully this has been of some help. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for participating, if you are participating in the comments. And uh, hopefully all of you take care of each other. Please be well. Follow the instructions from your CDC or whatever equipment that you have in wherever you live. Uh, take precautions. And hopefully uh, none of us get sick. And if you do get sick, I hope you get better very, very soon. Take care.